Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Laura for those of you that do not know and today's video is a super exciting one because I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite books from 2020. As crazy and chaotic as the year 2020 was, I happened to find a lot of new favorite books during the year and I read so many wonderful books and I'm really excited about this video because even though I've probably talked about the vast majority of these books on my channel before and maybe you've heard me talk about them, I'm excited to just have like all my favorites in one place and share them with you. Most of these books I rated five stars. There are some four star ones in there, but I don't really rate my books on any true merit. It's really just like how they make me feel, how I enjoy them, how the experience is reading the books, how I relate to the characters and enjoy the characters, and I just kind of base it off of that. So you guys know my reading taste. You kind of know what to expect with me anyways. So I'm just going to share with you guys the 10 books that were my favorite this year. I'm so excited to hear what you guys' favorite books were this year too, so definitely Definitely let me know in a comment down below, but other than that, I'm going to get started and share with you my list. This is in no particular order, by the way. These are all just my favorites. I didn't rank them like 1 through 10. So the first book I'm going to be sharing with you guys is Bad Boys Break Hearts by Michaela Schmelzer. This book was just such a delight to read. It was so fun, and I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. I truly fell in love with the plot, the characters, everything about it, and this was a childhood friends to enemies to love type romance, which kind of became one of my new favorite trope styles this year. I read so many great books with that trope, as you'll see in this video, and this one just happened to be one of my favorites. It was just so fun, even if it's not like the best book in the world, even if the plot is a little bit cliche, I just found myself being so highly obsessed with this book and I couldn't stop reading it, couldn't put it down, and I just thought about it for days after finishing it. So if you're into that, like enemies to lovers, they were friends when they were younger, then they go to college and they meet again and they kind of have this weird rivalry um, type situation. I definitely recommend this book. It was so, so great. Speaking of this same author, I actually read another book of theirs that is on this list, and that is Sweet Dandelion. I honestly can't believe I read that book this year. Like, this year feels so crazy. Like, looking back on the list of books that I've read, I'm like, I can't believe that was, like, this spring or, like, early winter last year. Like, I can't believe that this was all this year. is so weird, but this book I really, really loved, and it is about a girl who has something tragic happen to her at one of her old schools, and she ends up moving in with her brother and starting her senior year at a new school, and she falls for her guidance counselor. She's 19 in this book. She skips a year of school because after she experiences a school shooting at her last school. She like takes some time off because she was injured. She ends up forming this relationship with her guidance counselor who she sees every single day that is definitely inappropriate and not really looked at as a good thing, but they just have this connection. It's definitely a more taboo book, but it's kind of fun. I really love the writing. Again, similar to Bad Boys Break Hearts, I just love Michaela's writing, and I think you guys will really enjoy this one. Both of those books are pretty big, by the way, so if you like lengthier novels, this might be one to consider, but I feel like this is a really good one to ease in if you're like not super into taboo or like student teacher. I feel like this is a good starting point and I think you guys will really enjoy it. Speaking of kind of student teacher, another book on my list is called Burnout by Coralie June. This is one of my favorite books that I read this year because it was just such a happenstance moment for me to find this book. I literally found it on a random Goodreads profile and just decided to give it a go and I ended up really really loving it and it is about a girl who grows up with kind of an absent mother and when her mother passes away she ends up finding her older brother who she never really knew growing up and he lets her stay with him and his roommate who also happens to be his best friend and a teacher at the high school that this girl will be enrolling for her senior year and so this girl and her brother's best friend slash her teacher end up kind of creating this bond together and the story goes from there. She's kind of troubled and he really wants to help her and yeah, I love it. I love this book. It's another one that I think is a little more tame on the student teacher side. It's not as scandalous as you'd maybe imagine, and so I think it's another good starter book for that trope if you want to try and get into it. But it's such a fun book. I really enjoy the protagonist. I love when the main lead girls are a little wild and rebellious and less reserved like we see in so many popular romance books. I think it switches things up a little bit. So this is definitely one of those books, and I highly, highly recommend it. Another book that I truly can't 
even believe that I read this past year is Mr. Masters by T.L. Swan. This was one of the first books I read back in January and I totally fell head over heels in love with this book. It is about a girl who decides to move to England for the summer to nanny a family and she thinks she's going to be working for a mother but upon arriving she's actually working for a father and his two kids and she moves into their house and there's kind of this weird tension between her and this man and feelings happen and things progress and it's a really good story. There's a lot in it. It's definitely a dense packed book. It's pretty long so there's definitely room for some character development and kind of growth amongst the book. This one was just so fun. I really loved the conflict between her being like the babysitter, him being the dad. It was just kind of one of those tropes that I've never found a good book for until I found this one. I also just love the characters in this book. It's so fun. The dialogue is so fun and I think it's a really good read. Next book was a conclusion to a series that came out and that is The Dare by L. Kennedy which was the fourth and final I think a book in the Briar U series and this is a series that I've been highly highly obsessed with for many years ever since the off-campus series came out and then this series came along as a spin-off. I've just really loved these books and been obsessed with them so I was super excited to read the fourth book in the Briar U series and I loved it so so much. If you don't know these books take place in college and each book follows a different character and this book followed a girl named Taylor. I related to the main character so much that the book just felt really real to me and for that I just really appreciated it as a novel and so I think that's why I loved it so much and that it made my list. I just felt super connected to it but also I just happened to always love L. Kennedy's books and this was no exception to that rule. So if you haven't read the Briar U series or the Off Campus series yet I highly recommend that you do. They're all such wonderful books but this was definitely a great addition to the series. Another book that concluded one of my favorite series series came out and that was Teacher by Fiona Cole. This was the final book in her Voyeur series which I happen to really enjoy. I actually read the whole series during 2020 and then this book came out a little bit later after I read it and so I was super excited about it obviously but this one just happened to be my favorite. I don't even know how I would rate the other ones or rank them in order but I was so obsessed with the characters in this book. This is another companion novel series so you meet the characters a little bit earlier in the series and then this was their book that you finally are like waiting for in anticipation so I was super excited to finally get to read it and I knew immediately it was going to become one of my favorites. I don't want to spoil the series because it's like the last book but the main girl in the series goes through a ton of trauma when she's younger and it kind of delves into that and the lead male helps her through that in some ways and they form this connection and it's just a really great book. I loved it so much and I love the connection between the two characters. I love how the relationship unfolds. I think it's really fun and also just really sweet. So highly recommend the whole series, but Teacher was just so great. Another book that I absolutely love that is also a part of a series is called Storm by Carrie Ann Cole. This was the year that I just binged all of Carrie Ann Cole's books. I read them like early on during quarantine and I could not stop reading them. I've literally read all of her books at this point now. And this book Storm is the first book in her Embers and Ashes series, which I read the whole series and there's still more books to come. But the first book, I just, I've loved it since I read it and even though I've read the rest of the series, this one just still sticks out in my mind so much and it is about this girl who one day is driving somewhere for work and her car gets broken down and she meets this guy and he helps her but there's this snowstorm so they end up stuck in his pickup truck together for like a couple days during the storm. So it's kind of one of those like close proximity or like stuck together books which I know I'm still like trying to do a video for and I know you guys keep asking. Um, so that'll be out soon but this is one of those tropes and I really really loved it. I thought it was such a fun like use of the trope and then there's like more to the story obviously so there's more that happens and I don't know I just really loved it. It was a really quick read too. The whole series is like super fast paced. I was able able to read like almost a book a day when I was reading this series so highly recommend it if you want something to binge and something that's just fun and light. It's really really great. Next on my list is called Dirty Letters by Vi Keelan and Penelope Ward. You didn't think you would get through a wrap-up video without me throwing in a Vi Keelan or Penelope Ward novel and this one happens to be by both of them. Um, I love this book so much I randomly picked it up after a subscriber recommended it to me and I just binged the whole book and finished it so quick and it's about two 
two people who grew up as pen pals and one day the girl stops replying to this man um, because something happens in her family and years later she finds all these letters that he wrote to her that she never replied to and they kind of rekindle their friendship over letter writing and eventually meet in person. And there's kind of a little bit of a shock value with when they meet and you'll see how that kind of plays out. I don't want to spoil too much, but I love the idea of like them being pen pals and kind of having this history with each other without ever having met each other. And I just really enjoyed the way the story played out. I thought it was so fun. I'm always obsessed with Vi Keelan and Penelope's books. They just have a way of painting such vibrant characters and just the storylines always hit for me. So I highly recommend this book. It was my favorite that I read from them this year and I just loved it a lot. Next up was actually my most recent read this year, so I'm really excited because I haven't talked about it yet, and it's called Little Lies by H. Hunting, which is also Helena Hunting, who writes a lot of romance books, including the Pucked series. This book is actually a spin-off of that series, which I did not know going into it. I've never read any of her other books, but I might now because this book I immediately fell in love with, and I want to tell you, if you've read Bad Boys Break Hearts because of me, or just in general, and you loved it, this book is like very similar. This book had so many similarities. It's very similar with the friends to enemies to lovers where they're friends when they're younger and then they meet up again later in college. It's that exact same kind of building block of a story but the characters are a little bit different. The circumstances are a little bit different. So if you like that trope and you enjoyed that book or vice versa if you've read this and you haven't read Bad Boys Break Hearts, they're very very similar. So I highly enjoyed both of them um, but this one was so so good and I definitely hope that she writes more in this series. Also I might have to read the Pucked series now because of this one. Um, so yeah I'm really excited that I discovered her and that I'm gonna have more books to read from her because she has so many but this one was so great. I'd love to hear if any you guys have read it because I know I haven't talked to you guys about it yet um, but I really recommend it. The last book on my list is also the saddest book that I read this year and that is A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. I've talked about this book now a few times on my channel and guys it's just so so good but ridiculously sad like I was crying the whole time I read the book sad but it's so worth it and I just still highly recommend it. Um, it's about two people that grow up as neighbors and they form a really close bond from a very young age and eventually one of them moves away so they kind of lose connection and he comes back and then there's kind of this weird tension and it's kind of an enemies to lovers in a way so you'll see that unfold but there's a lot more to the story and what makes it sad so you kind of have to read it for yourself to find out but I promise you going in blind to the story is like the best thing you can do because you don't really need to know a lot about it to know that it's good. So just read it. You don't need to know anything more than what I told you. I promise you guys are gonna like it. So those are my favorite romance books from the year 2020. Again, let me know what you guys' favorites were in a comment down below or a tweet or anything. I'd love to hear all about it. But I'm super excited going into 2021. There's so many books that I cannot wait to read. And I'm probably gonna do a video sharing my like most anticipated releases of the year or something of the sort. I'm still not sure yet. I know it's been really like finicky with how much I've been uploading in my schedule so I'm really sorry for that. Hopefully I'll have more videos out this month. I really want to. I also started an ASMR channel um, and I'll have that link down below. I haven't posted anything on it yet but I got a new mic for Christmas so I'm super excited about it. If you're into ASMR please subscribe to my channel. If you're not that's fine uh, but I'll be starting videos on there soon too so link down below as well as all of my social medias, other ways to reach me, all in the description box below so check that out. But other than that, I hope you guys had a wonderful and safe holiday season and new year. And I'm super excited going into 2021. Endless possibilities this year, guys. I hope you make it your best year yet. And yeah, I love you guys very much. I'll see you very soon in my next video. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.